Hey guys, today I want to talk about uh, something, something political related, and I want to talk about the Republican Party and the future of it. Let's begin. The Republican Party was, you know, founded in the 1850s, mostly to combat the expansion of slavery, but over time, it, you know, it kind of progressed, you know. You saw the modern-day two-party system form around uh, that time. And over time, the Republican Party has became this pro-business sort of conservative party, you know. And we need to talk about the future of that and the validity of the Republican Party in the future. Since George H.W. Bush was elected in 88, the Republican Party has only won the popular vote one time, and that was 2004. Yeah, it was a, a re-election year, actually. And since then, no Republican president has won the popular vote nationwide. The Electoral College, though, is a different story, story. The Electoral College is the only thing that's saving the Republican Party. If you look, look at the Electoral College, it's the swing states that are really dictating the election. That's obvious. This is obvious electoral stuff. But we're going to go deeper into the more theoretical concepts of it but uh anyway we have seen a shift in these swing states arizona we're gonna see georgia north carolina you know those are the kind of states that you know recently have been voting conservative you know the the reagan the reagan era but it's shifting blue it's, it's really shifting blue and when you have those states fully shifting blue when it's not a real blowout year and uh, the the Republican Party can't win, they can't win the popular vote. But in the future, they're not going to be able to win the electoral vote. And we need to talk about why. The Republican Party has such this negative connotation in uh, Generation Z millennials. And, you know, you can always pull the card that generations become more conservative as they get older well that is not the case anymore well it's it's an internet thing most likely but you know millennials or this is around the time they're 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 supposed to shift conservative but they're not they're mostly staying liberal and voting for democrats same thing with uh gen z as we're going to see probably the same thing with gen alpha Jim Beta, as time goes on, they're generally, not totally, the Republicans are becoming less and less popular from generation to generation. Well, why is that? Well, policy. See, ever since the Reagan coalition, the Reagan revolution of the 1980s, we've sort of seen this real conservative shift, like before that, in the 70s. You had Nixon, you had Gerald Ford, they weren't that conservative, maybe even a little moderate, but, you know, Reagan came in and revolutionized the Republican Party. And, you know, in the short term, <laughs> like many of Reagan's policies, that worked. But in the long term, the uh, effects of it just don't hold up. For example, the, uh, the Reagan economic policies have uh, crippled the United States, but I won't get on that. But the uh, from a pure business perspective, if I'm the, the chairman of the Republican Party, they're not going in the right direction. Most Gen Zers and millennials are either socially moderate or socially liberal. There are, in America, there are only a, a, some kind of um, a small percent, a smallish percent of people my age, which I'm, I'm a teenager, I'm, I'm in Gen Z, that are actually full-blown conservative. There, there is, from when I, where I live, you know, there, there's a few, but generally nationwide, and then you got to think, and swing states is where it most matters, is where it matters. So first, electorally, we have to talk about the Federalist Party. Back in the inception of the United States, the two-party system existed, but not in the, the practicalities that we see now. We see, you see, we had the anti-federalist and the federalist. And so, the as time went on through the 18, 
uh, 10s, 1820s, the Federalist Party wouldn't get support because they had this specific niche in uh, New England. And the Anti-Federalists just really appealed to a, a larger audience, per se. Which you can make the argument that, you know, is some way that's like the Democratic Party is like the Anti-Federalists and the Federalists like the Republican Party. And what happened to the Federalist Party was that it disbanded. It, it really it did disband, but it disbanded into something different. It disbanded into the Whig Party, which had a, a wider appeal than the, the Federalist Party did. So let's talk electorally first. 2024. You know, I've heard so much about, oh, this is the most important election, you know. Uh, at first I thought that, you know. But, you know, I research a lot into this. And this is the, the, this is not, in the grand scheme of thing, things, it's not going to be that important. It'll be very, very, very close. But Joe Biden will come out the winner. You have this model, the 13 keys to the White House. I fill it out like every single week. And over the past two years, I've filled it out. And Joe Biden wins. You know, you, you were like, you may, you may say, how, how could he win? He just doesn't have enough nationwide scandals. There hasn't been that bad of an economy we've seen. And just just watch it happen. Unless Robert Kennedy and Marianne Williamson end up raking down Biden to get less than 66% in the Democratic primary. Or Cornell West gets like 10% in polls, but I'm, I'm betting on a Biden win. The effects of a Joe Biden victory, which I see inevitable, will greatly divide the country. And we've seen this in 2020, whether you like it or not, the Republican Party, uh, I'm not going to say that, the Trump wing of the Republican Party just kind of went a little crazy. You know, they uh, uh, tried to raid the Capitol, you know, they tried all these things. But what I really think will happen if Trump loses again, which I think he will, I think, I think Trump will be the nominee easily. I think Kerry Lake will be the vice president. The debates will be very, very hectic, especially the Lake-Harris one will be hectic. It's just the results would come days after. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. And when it, they do, right-wing groups and uh, Trump supporters would be more enraged than they were in 2020. I see nationwide unrest coming in the result of the 2024 United States presidential election. I'm not going to go into specific details, but the Republican Party may be tarnished even more. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, it's not going to matter. I'm just speaking from a truthful, unbiased, truthful perspective here. It's not going to matter that much in the grand scheme of things because nothing does. Because the human, the humans are so anthropocentric, you might say. They think the world revolves around them. You have your average day. You go to school, you go to work, you have your interactions, you go to the bar, you raise your family. But in reality, Mother Nature will strike at any moment. This world was not specifically made for us. We just happened to develop. And Mother Nature doesn't care about us. We're not special. But the gift of life is extraordinary, to say the least. So when the result of a, of a Trump loss again, you would see worse sort of reaction than the January 6th. I'm not going to elaborate much, but in the grand scheme of things, like I always say, uh, it doesn't really matter. 
But anyway, anyway, anyway. Then we get to, like, the second Biden administration slash first Harris, <laughs> Harris administration. I w- I like to mention that every 80 years, the, the government sort of system resets. I'm not going to get into specifics, but, you know, after a, a major war, you know, the you got the Revolutionary War, you got the Civil War, you got World War II. 80 years after each one of those, you know, there's a different war. And the government sort of changes a little bit, like the, the, the process of it. And the 80 years is up. So is the economic side of things, you know. Every 50 years, the economy sort of resets. You know, after a president implements a new economic policy, it boosts the economy. But around 50 years later, the economy just starts going bad. And you have a new president that comes in with their new policies. And they end up doing good. It's, it's 50 years since the 70s when that last happened. So we we will see major, major changes. But this current Democrat-ran system is not going to really change anything. Because the real trailblazers in, in our uh, government, you know, have been George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Franklin Roosevelt, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris. They're not, they're not them. They are not them. They... They don't want to change things. They don't want to change the status quo or how things are ran. They they just want to keep it on, you know? That's why the Republican Party will win in 2028. There will be a new pragmatic leader stepping up in the 2028 election, winning pretty handily, winning the popular vote, in my opinion. And they are the economic changers. And that man, or a woman, it's it's not a woman, it's a man. A man by the name of Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek Ramaswamy, you know, he's a businessman. He's a, a con- oh, he, he's, he's a conservative, he's a conservative. But in the, uh, the time around 2028, he will be elected because he has the ideas. And the fact of the matter is, Vivek Ramaswamy is running for president in 2024. So we have a set idea on what he believes in. Is he going to win? Absolutely not. He's not going to get past the primary. But he's he's the fastest growing candidate for sure. He, for sure. He's, he started off at less than 1% in uh, polling. Now it's 6% in the Republican primary polling. He's gaining support with his pragmatic ideas i do say so myself which is why he will be the 47th or 48th president of the united states and all depends if biden resigns or passes away in office during his uh, second term i would say he, he probably resigns in his second term but i'm not completely sure but yeah vivek ramaswamy he uh, talking about him he's a well, for my research, he's pro business. You know, he's a he's a capitalist, and he he's focused on domestic production. And what I didn't mention, or I may have mentioned, I forgot, was World War Three. I think that the war that happens every eighty years will be a third world war, but the war won't be. I'm not going to explain too much. But it's not going to be that much of a big deal. It's just going to be a burden like the Vietnam War. Like Americans are not going to be, your average American is not going to be, well, unless they implement the draft again. But your average everyday American is not going to be that much affected by the effects of the war. But, um, you know, there, there'll be a anti-war push and Vivek Ramaswamy will, will fill that void. You know, Vivek will change up the economy expand consumerism and stuff like that he he wins in 2032 you know he he wins again and then 2036 that 
will be the beginning of the end for the Republican Party. In my personal opinion, I think Jeff Jackson, if you don't know who that is, check him out on TikTok, Instagram. He's a, he's a, a freshman congressman. He, uh, he's, I guess he, I guess he's transparent, you know, uh, he can't be too sure, but I can really see him adopting a sort of FDR sort of thing, you know, he, uh, posts TikToks and debriefs about stuff. He, he's getting really, really popular, like nationally popular, and it's just his freshman year in Congress, so he's definitely a guy to look out for in the future. I, he's, he's from North Carolina. I think I think he will become a senator one day, yeah. Then from there, he'll become president. He will sway the vote. He'll run as a popular guy. Of course, he has a great administration. And I, what, I, what I didn't mention, Reagan is similar to Ramaswamy in the fact that, um, you know, they changed the economy up. And then usually the presidents after that Get the benefits of that. So you got Bill Clinton right there. He will definitely ride off the uh, the the Ramaswamy policies. He's not that kind of guy that'll like change much. He'll just he'll just ride. He'll just ride off. And so he wins handily in twenty forty. But you know, you got 2044. And the fact of the matter is, if you if you know basic level uh, presidential politics, usually, usually the president serves two terms. And usually the 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 opposing party wins after after those two terms, usually that's how it goes. But you might start to see something weird in the 2040s. Something like the Democrats win in 2044 just because of the swing states and their, and their swing to the, the Democratic Party, you know? And we need to talk about policy, too. You know, the, the, uh, the Democratic Party will, will still be this NATO sort of globalist thing, kind of. Republicans will be shifting away from that, but they'll still hold these, like, you know, conservative values that aren't really hitting with a general populace. Also, a fact of the matter is, most people my age, they hate the, the two-party system. Most, I would say, a good 60% to 70%. They would rather not have a two-party system than anything. But, you know, that's, that's a case for the far future. Anyway, 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 the Democratic Party will continue to win just because of the electoral college thing. And it'll start to be bad for Republicans because they're, yeah, they, they can keep control of the House. They can maybe control the Senate because of the, you know, the states. But, you know, they're just losing support nationwide. And what starts to happen you might have these people in the inner Republican Party that, that, that start to see the flaws of the start to see the flaws of conservatism. And they might start a new party after the after the Republican Party dies, you know, around twenty fifty would would be the time of that. And let's say the Democrats won in twenty forty eight. So you got sixteen straight years of Democratic administration. So the Republican Party kind of dismantles because the RNC and their establishment just can't figure out a, a, a certified winning strategy. And that's where young sort of idea just guy, uh, guys or girls come in create a new party that doesn't tap into that conservatism, really. They just tap in to the populism. And that's where the Republican Party is going, right-wing populism. Also, another thing, the uh, even, even with that, the current conservative base that they do have now is not like, like economically conservative most of the time. They're actually economically moderate. So they love the Social Security, stuff like that. 
So please, Republican politicians, don't 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 cut that stuff because you're you're not you're not it, man. You, you, you leave the you leave the place, man. Anyway, Republic uh, no Repub okay by the, by this point Republicans are dead. So I mean that's that's kind of no not dead like like not like that the the party itself is dead. Yeah. So it's a whole new party, like a populist party or something like that. You know, them not tapping into the conservatism, but, you know, just pushing the main home-hitting policies. And that may resonate with with more people if they can expand the marketing, if they have good leadership. You know, I think that that is a possibility. I think that will happen and the Republican Party will, will just crumble. And the thing is... I've, I've been it, I've been to a a young, no, not, I've been to a men's Republican meeting, and, you know, it's all, it's all old people, you know, and eventually, and they, they just tap into the conservatism and stuff, you know, they're not tapping into the real issues that, you know, people my age can relate to, you know, let me tell you. You got issues like lobbying, corruption, sending billions of dollars to Ukraine, you know, not using our tax money efficiently. That's what we need to focus on. And, you know, I would be happy if the Republican Party just can't shift. In the future, I plan on going into politics and stuff like that. You know, I I, I would be open to creating a, a party if it had enough like support after the 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 fall of the theoretical Republican Party. But we just need a party that's is focused. Focused on real issues like that, stopping the corruption. And that effectively ends the video because that itself is the end of the Republican Party. And a recap, Donald Trump doesn't win 2024. Vivek Rami, uh, Ramaswamy wins, wins 2028 and 2032. But after that, presidentially, the Republicans never have a Republican president again. And eventually the party falls. Uh, yeah, uh, th thank you guys for watching this video. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post more videos like these. I have this, I have this list where uh, I've written down ideas and stuff that I've come up with. You know, I have my my uh, Republican Party uh, notes right there. And I will continue to make more socioeconomic political videos as we go, as we go on. You know, this was kind of a surface-level topic, but, you know, uh, in the future I might be able to tap into to more to more deeper topics on a deeper level. Well, thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and smash that notification button. Bye.